Microphone polar patterns. Omnidirectional. Cardioid. Low bar. Supercardioid. Hypercardioid. Bidirectional. Antarctica. Okay, so one of those isn't exactly a polar pattern. But if you've ever wondered what all those funky graphics or microphone spec sheets are and what they actually mean, I'm here to help. Microphone polar pattern, also known as pickup pattern, describes how sensitive a microphone is to sound waves from any given direction. If you've ever shopped around for a microphone, then you've probably seen something like these. These graphics show a 360 degree image of where a microphone accepts or rejects incoming sound. Typically, there are six microphone polar patterns to choose from, and picking the correct one can be the difference between super crisp audio and super soggy sound. The main microphone polar patterns are cardioid, super cardioid, hypercardioid, omnidirectional, shotgun, and bidirectional, also known as figure of eight. As you can see, there are some big differences between each pattern, and each one has a unique set of strengths and weaknesses. Let's start by looking at cardioid. A cardioid microphone is most sensitive at the front, or the top, depending on how you look at it. The least sensitive part of a cardioid microphone is at the rear. This helps reject ambient noise from behind the microphone, which reduces the risk of feedback without affecting the input from the front. This feature makes cardioid microphones ideal for live vocalists, studio recordings, and even rooms with poor acoustics, if you keep the mic close to the sound source, also known as close miking. Here's a cardioid mic from Sennheiser, the E835. It's a really popular choice for speech and for singing. It picks up really well from the front and rejects really well from the sides and even more so from the back. As the name suggests, supercardioid is a type of cardioid polar pattern. The tighter pattern results in reduced pickup from the sides and an increased pickup from the front and the rear, which can result in some unwanted input from behind the mic. Supercardioid microphones are excellent at sound isolation and generally result in a high gain before feedback. This makes them particularly good for focusing on sounds in loud environments, such as vocalists recording with a band in a studio. Typical supercardioid microphones include gooseneck, boundary, ceiling, as well as lapel and head mic. This is the D5 from AKG. Now this one is a super cardioid pickup, so it picks up even tighter from the front and rejects even more from the side. Now the only trade-off is that it does pick up slightly from the back. The omni in omnidirectional means all, which gives you a clue to the properties of our next polar pattern. Omnidirectional microphones, like this lapel microphone and this lapel microphone, are sensitive to sound from all around them. This makes them ideal for people who move around a lot like a lecturer turning their head from side to side, or for hanging mics and boundary mics, which might not be as close to the sound source. Because omnidirectional mics pick up sound from all around, they're also great for recording ambient sounds or capturing a room's natural acoustics. However, you do need to be thoughtful when using omni mics on stages or in loud environments, as they can be easily drowned out or result in major feedback. Now this is not how I'd recommend using your ME2. However, it does demonstrate really well the 360 degree pickup pattern that you would typically find in an Omni. Also, you may hear more room tone when using an Omni as it's more sensitive than the other microphones we've shown. Simply put, bi-directional microphone picks up audio equally in two directions, typically from the front and the rear. The polar pattern is often called a figure of eight because of its pickup shape and is most commonly found in large diaphragm and ribbon microphones. This polar pattern is excellent for vocal and instrumental recordings where maximum sideways rejection is required. Try to steer clear of bi-directional mics when isolating a single source in a loud or acoustically messy environment. Here we have the Sontronic Sigma 2. This is a bi-directional microphone, so it's got a really focused pickup at the front, a lot of rejection at the sides, and then another really focused pickup at the back. Hypercardioid is a bit of a mix between cardioid and bi-directional, with a large frontal lobe and smaller rear pickup. The major benefit from this polar pattern is the increased rejection for the sides and more focused pickup in the front and slight increase in the rear. The main drawback to hypercardioid mics is the sensitivity to vocal plosives. These are sharp popping sounds you can get from words like kite, pod and golf. If possible, it's always best to use a pop filter with hypercardioid microphones to help reduce some of these plosive sounds. Hypercardioid head mics such as this Audio Technica Pro 8 do a great job at isolating vocals and rejecting from the side and the rear. Now this is great especially if the microphone is placed really close to the speaker's mouth. Finally we have the low bar or shotgun polar pattern. These microphones are extremely focused at the front with maximum rejection at the sides and much less pickup in the rear. Low bar mics are really interesting because they're often just a hypercardioid or supercardioid capsule located down an acoustic tube. 
These tubes can vary in length, with the sideways rejection increasing with the length of the tube. You'll often see low bar mics used on films and TV sets, because they can clearly capture the talent's vocal from a distance, without picking up sounds of the environment or the crew. However, low bar mics don't perform well in situations where you need to capture the full ambience of a space, or as a fixed mic on a moving source. This is the Audio-Technica 897 shotgun microphone. This has a super focused and clear pickup from the front with an aggressive cutoff at the sides and in the rear. So that's a wrap. Whether you work in studio, TV production or live events, you know the basics of polar patterns and more importantly, which mics will and won't work for your project.